Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the track defaults in Reaper. Now before we get into this, what we're seeing over here is what I call the one channel side mixer. And to create it, if we're dealing with a floating mixer, just right click it, go to dock mixer in Docker, which puts our mixer down here, grab this tab and pull it out, see the gray box, and just push it to the left side of the screen. Then we can resize the mixer so we only see one track, like this. So when we have multiple tracks, clicking on each one only shows one channel on the left side, which makes it easier to adjust the volume one track at a time on the left side of our screen. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to adjust the track defaults or what happens when we create a new track. Whether we double click over here or go to the track menu and insert new track or use the keyboard shortcut over here. The type of track we get can be changed with the new track defaults. So let's go to the options menu and choose preferences. Then we'll scroll down under project to track send defaults. And this section right over here decides what happens when we create new tracks. The first option is the track volume default gain. It defaults to 0 dB. So when we create a new track, the fader starts at 0 dB. So it passes the signal without changing the gain, without cutting it or boosting it. We could double click it to move it back to the default. Both new tracks, it's going to start right here. But we can change that. Let's change it to minus six. And now, if we create a new track, the volume starts out at minus six, which is very useful if you want to start with your tracks lower to give yourself more headroom. So, if you want to start with a different value, just change it right here. If you want to start with the fader all the way down, just type in negative infinity or INF. And now, if we create a new track, the fader starts out all the way down. So we could bring it up as we need it. But again, the default is 0 dB. The next option is default visible envelopes. So by default, we don't see any envelopes when we create a new track. We could add them by hitting this button, add one for volume, pan, mute, or we could use a shortcut, type V for volume, or P for pan. But if you want to start with those envelopes already there, just choose them right here. Maybe volume, pan, and mute. Now, if we create a new track, those envelopes are already on the track, ready to be used. But by default, they roll off. The next option is default envelope point shape. By default, it's linear, but we could change it right here. When it's linear, And we add some points and move this one. The shape right here is linear. But we could right click it and change the shape to square or fast start, fast end, or readjust it. Alt on the PC, option on the Mac, and just grab it to create your own shape. But by default, it's linear. And we could change that on new tracks right here. And the next option is default automation mode. It starts out in trim read. So we create a new track. 
the automation mode is in trim read. We could change it right here to read, touch, latch, or write. But if you prefer any of these modes with new tracks, just change it right here. Maybe to touch. If we create a new track, it starts out in touch mode. Ready to be written right away. But again, the default is trim read. Then we could adjust the track height for new tracks. If we set this to small, if we create a new track, it's going to be small. Or medium. Or large. But if you want to use a custom size, just create one. Let's make it bigger, page up, and then choose Use Current. And that'll save that current size. So any new track we create starts out at that size. And it becomes a custom size. Then down over here, we can choose to show our new tracks in the mixer. This is on by default. So if we create a new track, it shows up in the mixer. But if you don't want that, we could turn it off right here. And now a new track only shows up in the track control panel, not in the mixer. We can still change that under view, track manager. Choose our track and view it in the track control panel, in the mixer, or both. But by default, they're going to show up in both. And over here, we can decide if our new tracks are already sending to the main parent sent. And what that means, if we create a new track and go to our routing, it's already being routed to the master parent sent, which is usually output one and two on your computer audio interface. But if you don't want that, maybe you're using an analog or a digital mixer, we could turn it off track by track, or turn it off for new tracks. So if we create one, instead of it being sent right here, we can send it manually to any output you want. But again, by default, this is on right over here. Then this option is off by default, which is free item positioning. With it off, if we have some items on this track, we move them around, they're going to overlap with each other, but visually, just side to side. If you want to move them up and down visually, we could right click the track and turn on free item positioning. And now we can move them around like this, change their size like this. But if you want this behavior by default, just turn it on right here. And now our new tracks are going to behave that way. But by default, this option is off. Then we could adjust the recording configuration. By default, it's set up to input one. But we could change this to any input we want. My interface has two inputs, so I can record mono or stereo, multi-channel or MIDI. So the input we set up here will automatically be on every new track we create. Or we could turn it off to none. And if we create a new track, that input is set to none. Then we can change it manually here. 
But if you do a lot of MIDI, you might want to change it to your MIDI input. Let's change it to my USB MIDI keyboard, all channels. And now, if I create a new track, it's already set up with my MIDI input. So if I play my keyboard, I see input right here. But we could also change in here our input monitoring. By default, input monitoring is turned on. So we're going to hear our input through our track. But if you want it off, by default, let's say you're using direct monitoring with your interface and you don't want to monitor it through the track, just turn it off right here. And new tracks are going to have input monitoring turned off. You can still change it here to be on or tape auto style or any preference you want. But we could change that default for new tracks right over here. And by default, monitor input is turned on. And we could also change the recording mode right down here. By default, it's going to record our input, but we could change it to MIDI. MIDI overdub, MIDI replace, or record the output, or force the format, or even disable recording using input monitoring only. So if you want any of these modes by default, just change it here, and our new tracks are going to default to that recording mode. But the default is to record the input, audio or MIDI. Then over here, we could choose to have our track record armed by default. If we choose it, we create a new track, it starts out record armed. We can still take it out of recording, we'll put it back, but by default, with this option on, it's going to be record armed when we create it, or turn it off, which it is by default, and the track is not armed. We have to put it in record manually. And the last option I want to show you is right down here. Automatic record arm when track selected. This is off by default, but it's actually a very useful mode. Let's turn it on. Now if we create a new track, by default, it's record armed because it's selected. So if we make another one, this track is record armed and this one is not. So just selecting each track puts that track in record. Select another one and it takes the first one out of record and puts the selected one in record. I find this very useful for dealing with tracks like MIDI. Let's say I'm recording a piano track and a string track. I could jump back and forth without having to arm each track and unarm the other track each time. I could just select them and they go into record and unselect them and they come out of record. Now we could turn this mode on manually by right clicking over here and turn it on and off even if it's not the default. But if you want this option on by default, just turn it on right here. And like I said, it's off by default. Now I should also mention a lot of time and care went into choosing these defaults. And as a new user, it can get a bit confusing if you change too many of these things too fast. So please take the time to understand these preferences before you change your defaults. So that's pretty much it. That's the track defaults in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.